today we're going to talk a little bit about wind provisions and we've noted the title as clarifying frequently misunderstood wind provisions, but we'll also touch on places where maybe the wind provisions don't exist. And so we need to um, take what we have within the body of the code and turn it into something we can use. So it will be clarifying frequently misunderstood and uh, non-existent wind provisions. With that being said, the topics we'll discuss here today will be enclosure classification. We'll talk about analysis methods when generating wind loads. We'll talk about torsion specific to wind loads. We'll hit on a handful of topics that are relatively short and quick hitting canopies, corner zones, effective wind areas, and rooftop solar PV. And then we'll finish our last or third chunk segment here today talking about irregular buildings. And that's one of those areas that uh, the code is relatively silent. And so we're going to see if we can't provide a little bit of guidance on what to do when we encounter these irregular building structures. That being said, we'll go ahead and get started here with our first segment for the day, which is the enclosure classification topic. And in order to get started, I would like to um, introduce a, a, a sample building. Um, it's a relatively open agricultural type of structure, steel framed, and uh, working within the ASCE 7 context, we have three options for classifying this building. The first would be enclosed, the second would be partially enclosed, and the third is open. In order to determine which of the three we have, it's important for us to understand the definitions. And it's not the English language definitions, but it's the ASCE 7 definitions. And in this case, they're quite different. So while the building we looked at before looks quite open, um, the definition of open is that all four of our walls, in this case four walls, need to be at least 80% open. So going back to our image here, you can see that while the two side walls here are very open and this front face here is very open we have an entirely solid back wall there so in this case we need to really pay attention to the definitions in ASCE 7 in order to be an open building each of our walls needs to be 80 percent open so we go to the next option or the next definition within ASCE 7 in this case it's partially enclosed before we dive into this definition I do want to comment that uh, this is a two-part definition, and within each of the parts of the definition, there are finer points and, and sub-requirements. So we'll try and keep it pretty simple, uh, but there are a lot of words and numbers here. So I'm going to ask for your patience, and we'll work the problem, and I think these definitions will become slightly more clear, but I do want to hit on them briefly. So for partially enclosed, we need to meet both of these conditions, not one or the other, but both. The first one is that the total area of openings in a wall, so a windward wall, for example, needs to exceed the sum of the openings in the rest of the building. And that's the rest of the building being roof and walls. And it doesn't need to just exceed them, but it needs to exceed them by 10%, more than 10%. And again, I think our example problem in a second will help us. The second definition, and frankly, I'm going to ignore the sub points. Uh, we need an opening that's at least four square feet, which you know any door or window generally achieves that or 1% of the wall area, that's usually pretty simple to meet. So the important piece of this second part is that the percentage of openings in the balance of the building needs to be less than 20%. So we ignore whatever windward wall we're looking at, and we look at a percentage of the rest of the building. How open is it? And it needs to be less than 20% open. If we are not an open building, if we are not an partially enclosed building, the code then allows us to classify our building as an enclosed building. And this is a little unfortunate because I'd argue the vast majority of the buildings that we engineer are enclosed buildings. And so it's in order to get here, though, you do need to check, am I open? Am I partially enclosed? And the only way to get here is to say no to those two options. In order to run the calculation, we first need to understand what is an opening. And I'll say, well, this sounds like a really simple question. Uh, it's actually quite heated and um, we're vetting this at the ASCE 7 wind load committee right now for ASCE 722 and it's not an obvious answer. Um, I would argue that it actually depends on where you are geographically. If you pulled uh, the audience, uh, the engineers, I think you would see a split in interpretation depending on where you are geographically. But let me show you what is in the code right now and frankly it's not in the standard. This is actually in the commentary to 26.2 and what it says is doors, operable windows, air intake exhausts, operable louvers, 
and then it has this peculiar phrase, which I've italicized, anything designed to be open during design wins. Um, that phrase is anything but clear, uh, but the intent that's being written here is anything that can be open during a design wind event should be considered open. Um, this is where if you look across the country, you'll find that uh, in hurricane zones, it's a lot easier to close up some of these things. As we know that hurricane event is coming, we have some advance notice. If you're outside of a hurricane zone, it's much harder to convince yourself that your windows are going to be shuttered, for example, during a design wind event.